Hi everybody, let's in this video understand a primary function of banks, which is credit creation. How banks can create money out of thin air and increase the money supply just like that it seems. Very, very interesting concept. A lot of people think this is really quirky, it's not, it's very sustainable. A process known as fractional reserve banking. Right, so we have our bank in the middle there and we know that one of the key functions of a bank is to bring together savers with borrowers. Savers will deposit money in banks and will gain a rate of return back from banks as a result. Banks will then create loans from those savings and will lend to borrowers and will charge an interest rate to borrowers as a result. The whole idea is that the interest rates charged to borrowers will be greater than, than the rate of return given to savers. The difference will be the profit that banks make and we know that their primary objective is to make profit. Great, that's how it works. But let's dig deeper into this process. Let's understand this idea of fractional reserve banking. Well, let's take an individual saver who deposits £100 in the bank. The bank will then decide and make a very careful calculation of how much of that £100 needs to stay in the bank, knowing that the individual saver is unlikely at one time to demand all of their savings back. More likely, that individual saver will come and want to withdraw some of that £100 to finance whatever spending in the economy that that saver wants to do, but unlikely that £100 will be withdrawn at once. So the bank decides that maybe only £10 of that needs to be left in the bank in case that saver comes and demands some of it. The rest of it can be lent out to borrowers, £90. Borrowers want money to spend in the economy. When they spend, that generates income for somebody else, at which point that £90 can end up back in the bank as a deposit again. All of a sudden, we are increasing the money supply. Where only £100 existed before, we've now got £90 on top, so £190 in the money supply, compared to just £100 before, remembering that deposits form a key part of the money supply. So now £90 are back into the bank. The bank will think, ah, oh, okay, only £9 of that I need to keep in the bank, just in case that individual saver comes back and demands some of their savings. The rest can be lent out to individuals uh, lent out to borrowers who will then buy goods and services, that generates income for somebody else and eventually that £81 will come back in the form of a deposit in the bank and that process keeps happening and happening and happening. So you get the idea of how deposits can be turned into loans and they will come back into the bank as a form of deposits. This process continues. What we can actually work out is how much extra money can be created from an initial deposit using an equation called the money multiplier. And the money multiplier equation is this. The money multiplier is 1 over the reserve ratio, or the reserve requirement. In the UK, the reserve ratio is not set by the Bank of England yet. It's not, there's no regulation in place at all. But in the US, there is a regulation of how much commercial banks must keep in their banks when deposits are made. And, and that is 10% in the USA. In the UK, it's not there. In my example, you can see that the reserve ratio is 10%. Any time deposits have been put into the bank, 10% of it have been kept in the bank, the rest has been lent out. So in my example, the money multiplier is 1 over 10%, i.e. 1 over 0 0.1, which gives you a value of 10. So if you multiply the initial deposit by 10, you get 1,000 pounds. And that is the money supply as a result of an initial deposit being put in a bank. A thousand pounds of money now exists in the economy. To work out the increase in the money supply from a 100 pound deposit with a money multiplier of 10, you need to take away 100 pounds from whatever figure you get. So 10 times 100 gives you 1,000 pounds, minus the initial deposit, which is 100 pounds, because that already existed, means you have 900 pounds of brand new money in the money supply. So that is fractional reserve banking, guys, and this happens on a daily basis. When we put our money into bank accounts, some of it is kept in the bank and the rest of it is lent out to individuals. And that keeps happening in a circle, 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 creating new money out of nothing, it might seem. But this is very sustainable as long as we all have faith in banks, as long as we all don't go to the bank at once and demand all of our money back. If we do that, we know banks don't have all that money. They're lending a lot of it out to other individuals. That's called a bank run. So unless we do that, this system will be absolutely fine. If we all go to the bank and demand our money, that's called a bank run. And that's when this fractional reserve system will completely break down. So the whole idea of fractional reserve banking 
is that it's based on trust, it's based on faith that individual savers will never at once come and demand huge chunks of their savings back at one go. As long as we don't do that, this system is very, very sustainable and it leads to increases in the money supply which can facilitate growth in the economy. Thank you so much for watching guys, hope that makes sense, very interesting stuff. I'll see you all in the next video.